So in this video, we're going to introduce uh, a fairly significant consequence of continuity, right? Um, so, so far, um, everything we've been doing with continuous functions is relatively straightforward, right? The definition of continuity at a point is just telling us that the limit value and the function value agree. We look at all the sort of typical functions that we're used to, like polynomials and trig functions, and we discover that they're all pretty much continuous everywhere that they're defined. Um, so, so it seems like, you know, continuity from that point of view is, is you know, is something that we're familiar with. It's, it's, a, it's a property that we expect functions to have, right? Um, the intermediate value theorem is, is a consequence of continuity. And, and once I kind of tell you what this is saying, it's going to be perfectly obvious. It's going to seem very obvious. Um, despite the fact that it seems like such an obvious statement, um, it's actually quite it's quite a difficult result, both in the sense of trying to prove it, and we aren't going to try to prove it in a course like Calc 1. Um, this is a, something that you might see in either in a more advanced calculus course or, or possibly um, an analysis course. You might see a proof of the intermediate value theorem. Um, and, but also, even if you accept that it's true, a lot of students struggle with using the intermediate value theorem because it it follows sort of a, a logical process that you're not used to, right? Most things that you're used to so far um, involve, you know, working with, with functions, with formulas, plugging in numbers, doing calculations, getting a result, right? Um, coming to an answer. Um, the, the intermediate value theorem is interesting in that, in some sense, it will tell us that there is an answer, but it won't tell us what the answer is, okay? So what the intermediate value theorem says, it's here. Right? Uh, it says, suppose you've got a continuous function, right? Continuous on some interval. And you've got different values for the function at the two endpoints. So maybe it's bigger at the left endpoint than the right, or maybe it's smaller, it doesn't matter. Um, you've got some y value that's in between the two y values you have at the endpoint. Um, the intermediate value theorem guarantees that no matter which y value you choose, this k, um, there will always be some point between a and b where when you take that number and plug it into the function, you get k, right? So you see this there exists, right? So it guarantees the existence of this number c. It doesn't tell you what that number c is. It doesn't tell you how to find it. It just tells you that this number exists, which satisfies this equation, okay? So let's think about what it's telling us. Well, if we think graphically, things become pretty clear, All right? So here's A, here's B, and we think of continuous functions. Remember we try to think of continuous functions as being, um, you know, if we think of the graph, there's not going to be any jumps or holes, right? There's no removal discontinuities, no jump discontinuities, there's no asymptotes, right? There's no breaks in the graph. So if I'm trying to plot my function, it's probably going to look something like this. I'm going to start at some value, right? So here's, here's f of a, and it's going to go and maybe it is something like this. Okay, ends up over here. So here's f of b, okay? So what the intermediate value theorem says is choose any y value between f of a and f of b. Let's say this one. You're guaranteed that the function attains that y value at some point. And if we just sort of draw the horizontal line y equals k, what it's saying is that there's got to be some point where that line crosses the graph. And we can see it, right? It's right here. So we have this point right there, and we drop that down, and that is our C, right? And, you know, if I had chosen a different B, right, if I had chosen maybe, maybe I choose this as my endpoint, right, I bring B over here, and now F of B is down there, and I choose a K, say, here, it might be that there are now, in fact, several 
values of C that work, several values of C that intersect that line. There might be only one, right? Uh, but there has to be at least one. That's what the intermediate value theorem is guaranteed. When it says there exists some C, right, there is at least one. There might be more, but we don't know. All we know is there's at least one. Um, in, uh, in a bit, we'll talk about how you can actually start narrowing things down and, and seeing if you can actually come up with some idea of what that value might be. Right? Um, so intuitively, the intermediate value theorem makes sense. In practice, students struggle to use it. I think one of the things that people have difficulty with with the intermediate value theorem is it's not giving you the C value, right? It's giving you conditions that need to be satisfied before you know that this number exists. Um, so typically, the way you have to use the intermediate value theorem in practice, and we'll see this in the, in the examples coming up, is, well, first you have to convince me that the function we're working with is continuous on some interval. In some problems, you might not even be given the function. You have to come up with it. Right? The next thing you've got to check is that you've got different values at your two endpoints. Okay. But all you got to do is check those two things, and they're generally straightforward to check. But once you've checked them, you pick any number between those two values, and existence of this C is guaranteed. Right? Um, and so probably you're going to end up making some statement at the end of a problem using the intermediate value theorem that just says, OK, yeah, I know this C is there. I don't know what value it is. I just know that it has to exist. Um, and, and for some people, this is very unsatisfying, that you, you tell me this number exists, but you can't tell me what it is. Um, but there are some ways to try and, and narrow things down and figure that out. And we'll talk about that as well.